Hey guys, it's White Manga here. My digital art sucks, okay? It sucks. It's not where I want it to be. But it's fine. You know, self-critique sometimes can be really good. It can help you improve. I mean, one of the fastest ways to improve is if you look at your art and you just, you just hate it. You just, it's trash. It's trash. It's garbage. Basura. Basura. Trash. But at the same time, being honest with yourself and have the mental capacity to not feel down when you see that. In fact, the ability to see that will go a long way because if you can see your errors, right, it can help you make sure you don't have to make the same mistakes moving forward. If you're able to notice your errors, if you're able to adjust, if you're able to compare your art to art styles and other creators out there who you feel like are on a standard you want to meet without feeling bad about it and just being honest with yourself and being determined to improve, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, man. You'll be fine. So I can look at my digital art and know that, yes, it's not, it's not complete trash. You know what I mean? In fact, I've improved compared to where I used to be, which is what really matters. When you're improving, you're comparing yourself to yourself, right? But at the same time, when you're aiming for where you want to be, you're going to look at the people in the industry who are doing things right the way you would like to be able to do them, who know things that you don't, who know things you would want to learn. You can always learn from them because in this space, honestly, in whatever field, it's always cool if you know where you can develop your skills. It's always cool if you know where you can improve, what you need to work on, if you're always constantly learning. And in some cases, it can be fun as well. I've improved, I've learned a couple things, a couple tricks and tips here and there. You know, I know enough to even teach, right? Without teaching you the wrong thing. So when I say I'm trash, I'm just like, you know, compared to where I wanna be, I'm trash. But it doesn't mean you can't learn anything from me. I'm smart enough to feel stupid. I'm smart enough to know that I don't know. At least on a couple of things. Like, at the end of the day, I still like what I'm able to produce, especially my manga work and also my digital cell shading work. So don't get it twisted. I'm not saying, you know, it's that bad. But compared to where I want to be, compared to other creators that I see and appreciate and admire their work, I have some way to go. Over the years, there are a lot of artists and digital painting tutorials online, whether it be just text on some website or YouTube here that I pick a couple tips and tricks here and I kind of blend it all in a little pot, add my little spice on top and my own art style and kind of create my own work. So I've learned a lot of things along the way. I just know that there's still a lot more for me to learn. Even with this illustration here, I'm painting the lead character, Sano, from my series, Apple Black. You guys can go read the first chapter free online. I'll leave a link to that. In fact, chapter 1.1 from the remastered is also online, at least a preview of it, so you guys can go check that out. And I have more details at the end to how you can read my series, volume one, two, out, all that good stuff. But I'm painting Sano here, and I'm also using tips that I've learned all over the way. And even the method that I'm using here, where you're kind of starting from grayscale, because it can help you kind of view and see the values a little better versus jumping in with color. But even at the end where you have to then transition from, from grayscale to color, there's still like a whole process with that as well. It's almost like you're painting on top and you start to see how other creators out there on whatever software they're using or wherever you find them, how they all have different methods, different ways they approach the layers on whatever software it is, whether it be Procreate or Photoshop. They have all sorts of methods of doing the same thing. And every once in a while, you see a trick that, you know, you didn't even know was possible. And you can just plug that and add it to your repertoire. I don't, I don't know if I used that word correctly, but I don't care. You get it. So this method of like painting from grayscale to color, the way some artists out there kind of paint completely on one layer. And in some cases, maybe they layer things and layer things. And and then certain good digital habits that people might have, duplicating the layers so they always have a previous version they can go back to if anything goes wrong. You're not just learning how to digitally paint, but you're also picking up some habits that make sense from all these guys. And I've always found that when I add variety to all the things that I can do, and I become a little more versatile than just creating art overall, it finds a way to improve my art even in other spaces that might be vastly different from what I was trying to learn originally. And because I've seen what all the other guys can do, that's how I know that I still have a ways to go. Sometimes it's the way I'm applying the brush. Sometimes it's my actual brush. Maybe I need to go get more brushes. If you're following a tutorial, it's usually best if you're using the same brush 
that the creator is using. So you're gonna have to go get those. The ones I'm using here, I think I got them from Ahmed Aldori or something. I can't, can't remember how his name is, but some of you already know who I'm talking about. This is the way I'm applying color, the way I'm messing around with the layers, all of that. I just feel like there is an easier way to do the same thing and I'm just kind of struggling a bit. Like if you're creating the work and you can feel that something is off, something is wrong, like there has to be an easier way to do it. You're out there going A, B, C, D, E. Well, people are going A to Z quickly. There has to be a better alternative. You know, sometimes you just know. I can feel that with some of my brushes. I, I wanna be able to paint and not rely on lines too much. I wanna be able to paint and have the illustration look way more realistic. Again, not that this is bad, but I do have a ways to go. Even if I don't even wanna color the way they do, I wanna be able to know how to do it. And then I can put my own little twist on it. It's always good if you kind of have a foundation where I'm following a tutorial, I'll follow it completely, know exactly how they do it. And then I can come in and start breaking and twisting things and breaking some rules and flipping stuff upside down and stuff like that. I see some flaws in my process. I see some flaws in my finishing work. I need to work on my coloring and lighting. But again, the good sign is being able to identify what the problems are, identify what the issues are, because that's the only way to improve. If you can't see it, you're never going to improve. And you can't rely on feedback all the time. You need to be able to train your eye to spot the issues. So for what I'm trying to achieve, I can see where the issues are. Same goes for my digital cell shading work, which I like, and my manga work, which I like. I can still spot some issues or places where I could improve on, but I'm much more satisfied there versus my digital painting. I feel like there's just something, something missing that's preventing it from being tip top, tippy top shape. I wanna be able to paint like backgrounds for any animations I wanna do, make them look like pristine. I wanna be able to paint concept work. Again, I can, I can already do these things, but to the level I want, I'm not there yet. I've seen some people use 3D as well, so I, I'd learn 3D if I have to. I, I already know a little bit of Blender, but again, time is also a factor. Uh, and I also take these things into consideration because I already have a lot on my plate trying to release volume three of Apple Black, working on Saturday AM, pushing out, pushing these videos out. So to a degree, I'm not in a super rush, but I definitely want to learn these things because I feel like it would just make me a better artist overall. So with my painting, I'm seeing the issues with the way I'm putting it together. I'm seeing the issues with the process. I'm seeing the issues with just my mood putting it together as well because they take time and so I'm taking all this time doing this work and not really having as much fun as I feel like I should not that I'm not having any fun but the parts where I'm struggling that needs to go so the plan would be to follow a lot of these artists so the plan would be to follow a lot of artists that I admire online you guys can also leave some recommendations in the comments for digital artists that you guys feel are just tippy top that I can learn from pop in their Patreons if I have to. And by the way, I have a Patreon. You guys can go check that out as well. Links in the description. You know, following these tutorials from top to bottom, learning exactly the way they're teaching it and then breaking the rules afterwards, getting the brushes that they're using for their tutorials because that goes a long way. It kind of removes any disconnect that might be there. Learning all their approaches to color because again, all these guys do the same thing very differently and they have their little nuances that they add to their own pieces, coloring, lighting, their whole approach to using the software, whether it be Photoshop or Procreate. I'm just lucky, like I said, I'm smart enough to feel stupid, but at the same time, because of that, I'm at a place where with my art, I can learn almost anything I want to learn. The only real villain or op is just time, because I'm hella busy. I also wanna learn all these things so that I'll be able to make videos for you guys on them and make videos that make this whole hard process much easier to consume and learn. So while I'm tightening up my digital painting skills with Photoshop and Procreate, you can also expect me to make videos on them in time. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested. I already have a lot of good tutorials on the channel, so you can go check that out as well. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, the United States to smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything. Turn on all notifications. It goes a long way, especially if you watch to the end. I appreciate you. Like I said, this is Sano, the lead of my series, Apple Black. 
volume one and two are out. I'll leave links in the description where you can go check that out. Or you can read the first chapter for free. Links in the description as well. You can even read it in Spanish now. So share that to all those interested. Chapter 1.1 is in there as well, but it's just a preview. If you want to get the first three chapters, you can get that on the Saturday AM mobile app, which is where Apple Black is published and serialized. I also have another series, Bukasi, that's in Saturday PM. If you want to learn more about Saturday AM and PM, please get our app. It's free. And in the app, there's a starter guide in there that kind of gives detail on who we are, what we do. Our core series are on our roster as well with character profiles. The list goes on. Again, check out my other videos. A lot of fun stuff you'll be able to find, especially if you're one who wants to create their own series or you're really into comic makings or just comics in general, manga, all that stuff. Get two free months of Skillshare free. You're welcome. Enjoy. It's Manga and I'm Audi 9000.